everyone. Donald J. Brower here with the Guardians at HS Wrestling.com podcast, Near Fall. A little late. We're just finishing up with the uh, girl skates a few hours ago. So I was kind of checking that out. So um, we're getting this out a little late to you. But before we talk about the girl skates, let's talk a little bit about some of the people who helped bring me to you, the sponsors. Dan Warnikoff, champion athletes. Dan is a huge proponent of wrestling. He's a huge proponent of helping you get better. Consider your body a luxury car. You're not going to go up the street to the guys you don't understand who, you know, they might have water in their gas. You don't know. You want to go to the guy who will help you get better. And Dan will help you get better. Pat Glory talks about how much he took his nutrition seriously between his sophomore and junior year. And and look at him now. He credits Dan. I mean, the list goes on and on. In-state, out-of-state, athlete, non-athlete. You could get better with Dan Warnerkoff, Champion Athletes. He's the sponsor of this show. Go check him out at championathletes.com. Now, as I said, we talked a little bit about the uh, girls. You know, we were just talking about how I was watching the, the girls' states. Just finished up. Great, great representation by uh, some of the local ladies. I know we had some uh, ladies finish higher where they, than they thought they would, and some ladies finish um, a little lower than they wanted from their seating. But, uh, you know, great job and great showing by the ladies. Uh, two, I really want to just kind of uh, highlight um, – Actually, there's a few I want to highlight, but, you know, first, Julia Fangaro from uh, Boot and making it to the final uh, was in control, got put to her back and lost uh, at 126. So she finished the second. Congratulations, Julia. Um, you know, a big fan of her cheering for that family. Um, to be honest with you, there's, there's some families I root for. The Fangaros are one of them. I, I started with Danny and then Joe and now Julia. Uh, that's kind of the family I, you know. You look back and you kind of say, oh, who would be the family you would hang out with in the summer? And the Funkaros are a family I'd like to hang out with in the summer. I'm not fishing for an invite to a party or nothing, guys. Come on. But uh, no, my, my wife, you know, I, I root for them. So congratulations, Julia. Um, our lone first place winner, Noel Gaffney from High Point at 165. Congratulations. Um, big win for High Point. High Point's you know, building a great program up there with the girls. They've already have a great men's program now when they get with the, uh, the ladies, it's going to be tough to stop that, that team up there. And another person at 165, I want to highlight uh, Kira Hubmaster from Kittatini, a senior finish sixth, a uh, four time medalist for the school. So uh, big congratulations to her and, you know, going up there. Another three time medalist, uh, Katrina Kling from Warren Hills who finished third at 120, but um, the full rundown of medalists, Aaliyah Payne Paris of Newton finished third at 100. Evelyn Andrade from 100 and Central finished fifth at 107. As we said, Katrina Kling finished third at 120. Fangaro finished second at 126. Kayla Vasquez from Kenilon finished third at 126. Paisley Fox from 100 and Central finished fourth at 138. Carney Weibel from High Point finished sixth at 138. Sophia Lombardo from High Point finished fourth at 145. Samir Koopa from Booten finished fifth at 145. Jody Holder from North Hunter to finish in third, finishing up her career um, from North and the down there. Uh, basically, great job, uh, Jody. I know you've been in here in the past. Another one I wanted to highlight, like I said, Noel Gaffney and Kira Hubmaster at 165. And Marissa DiPaolo from uh, West Morris who finished fourth. Uh, great job, ladies. I know uh, some weren't thrilled with being in Phillipsburg. Uh, I thought it looked like a great – tournament places packed there seemed to be a little bit of a delay with getting the final started i know originally it was supposed to start at three we ended up being at 5 30 no idea really what was going on with that but i think it's a, the right step i know there's people who are complaining that it wasn't down in atlantic city i understand the big stage um i also understand the need of wanting to have the ladies have their own so i understand uh but congratulations ladies I'm just happy you guys got to wrestle some more matches this year. I know last year with COVID, it was very tough. I think a lot of you, um, you young ladies, wound up only getting maybe one or two matches before the regions and to be able to get some quality dual meets and some other tournaments. Congratulations um, on another successful year. And I think it's a great building block for uh, girls wrestling going forward in the state and just kind of keeping it, keeping it rolling from there. Now, switching from the girls' states to the quest for the boys' states, um, I should, this should go up early Monday morning, maybe late Sunday night. Um, I'm very transparent with my picks. So my, how did I do for my 2022 district predictions are up? 
It was posted earlier today. Um, I did fairly well with my districts. The only one that I, that's kicked me is I and I had the hardest time because it was district I went to, District 7 at Roxbury. I was debating back and forth who to pick for the team champion. And I had Morris Knowles marked down, then Morris Hills, then Montville. Then, and I settled on Montville just from some of the picks. And it wound up being Morris Knowles. But that was the only one I missed as far as my um, – my overall predictions. Um, but as far as, you know, district one at Riverdale high point was the team winner there. Um, I did pretty well, got about half of the finalists and a lot of those teams I don't see, I don't know a Cresco or a new Milford or, you know, those. So I did, I did pretty good there. Um, district three at West Milford, Pope John winds up winning that one. Did a lot better there. Had, you know, missed, missed four, got 10, right. And a lot of these two, I only picked the winners. So a lot of these are finalists too. So it's, you know, it's not that difficult to you know, kind of say, but I don't want to pick a top three with the districts. I'll do that for regions. Um, and st- I'll do top four for regions coming up this week, but um, I, I keep it to the winners. Just it's, it's a lot of work. So I, I, I know that sounds hard. Well, it's just, it's just a lot of work to get done. <laughs> um, District four, Jefferson kid attending the big winner. Uh, only missed two there. And the other two were finalists, so not shocked there. Uh, District 7 at Roxbury, we'll get to in a minute. Um, I was there, so I have some a couple highlights. Mount Olive. Um, Mount Olive actually qualified 13 kids for the region, so I think that solidifies the idea that they're one of the top, if not the top, public school team, and I'm going to keep stumping for that. But, you know, I'm sure people are sick of hearing me by now. Um, did pretty well there. Got, a, got eight out of, you know, a little over half. That wasn't bad. Now, go to Nutley, Del Barton won in a landslide there. Um, the one funny thing I have with Del Barton is when you look at how Del Barton is, you try not to pick Del Barton against any, everybody. <laughs> but it turns out there was a couple of Del Barton kids who won that. I, not that I was surprised by, but, you know, advanced really well. They had a, a great run. District 10 at Peaberg, Phillipsburg won that handily. Um, second place was Hanover Park. Uh, I got 11 out of uh, 14 up there. Then we're going to switch to Morristown, District 11. Livingston took it. Um, I got 11 out of 14, so, you know, not, not too bad there. Randolph, uh, District 12, Warren Hills. Warren Hills had so many points to win this that we actually tallied it up, and I was actually shocked by this car. The second, third, and fourth place team, if you combine them, didn't have enough points to beat, beat Warren Hills. Great job by Warren Hills, the rebound from a, a, a tough groups. And I only missed three there. Um, head to Milburn, District 13, North Huntington. Um, did well there, got 10 out of, get 10 out of uh, 14 there. Delaware Valley, now it's getting a little rough. District 15, um, got about half there. And, uh, oh, District 17 at Franklin, Ooh, took a bath here. Uh, only got five right down there. Uh, St. John Vianney was the uh, winner in District 17. Uh, Del Val also won District 15. I. I digress from that but um the district i got to come out and check was uh district seven uh it was at roxbury it was all the um the reason i chose district seven a lot of people were curious all morris county and you know that's why i started at morris county and i'm wrapping that up this year so i wanted to go see you know local you know local teams that i cover all the time got to see cliff, cliff sailor who uh runs runs the meetings in the uh, morris county tournament for uh, basically scoring and in in, with the tournament, got to see him, got to see Joe Hoffman, a man who, you know, I credit with getting me started in the sports world um, when I was an intern at the Daily Record and kind of get me everything, you know, set up there. Um, former coach from Morris Knows, Larry Rizzo, who was, who was down in Charlotte, who drove up, saw, said hello to him. Um, I'll tell you what, security at Roxbury was tight because that lady at the front door was not letting me in. And I wasn't paying $12 for a final round. <laughs> so, uh, but security's top notch at Roxbury, top notch. Um, but, a, a, you know, a couple little highlights from Roxbury. Um, you know, I did pretty well there. Uh, only missed four winners. Um, the big thing, too, is a couple highlights. Um, 113, Omar Vas- uh, Vasquez from Morris Hills gets a late takedown to uh, beat Ethan Smith. And, and win it, and he just celebrated with, you know, his family and friends. Head to 126, Anthony Minetti from Montville. He wasn't getting paid by the hour, 
he went in there, you know, rolled around a little bit with Costello and got the quick pin. And, you know, that's what he wanted to do and set establishment. His teammate at 138, Justin Cialata comes out, gets a pin as well. Uh, Moffitt was very well represented in the finals. Um, you know, their heavyweight was there. They had some, you know, great jobs there. Um, and then on a, at 157, David Turner from Morris Hills, um, beautiful scramble here at the end, but he gets the late takedown for the two and, and wins it and just basically celebrates his entire family. And I got a chance to talk to him and some of the other Morris Hills guys afterwards. And um, they were, they wanted to honor their former assistant coach, Wayne Shealy, who we've talked about on here, passed away. His son, Joey Shealy was um, the last state medalist for Morris Hills and was actually in the building. And Mr. Uh, Wayne Shealy actually won coach of the assistant coach of the year for the district. So congratulations. And, and once again, um, to Joey and his mom and his, his sister and his family, uh, my condolences on the loss of your father, but it shows how much he was missed that, you know, he was honored the way he was. So congratulations uh, on that award. But we had, uh, like I said, a really busy weekend. Uh, it's going to slow down a little bit, but then we're going to start getting the seating for, for regions. Now, for people who don't know, regions are going to be set up a little differently this year. It used to be in the past that on Wednesday, Anyone who finished second and third would would wrestle each other, and then they would advance. And we do that's not happening this year. It's all condensed to a Friday Saturday, so that Friday is going to even be a little longer. So some of those top seeds and some of those guys who won aren't going to have that little bit of a break they usually get to kind of think it over. They're going to be out there ready to wrestle right away. So if you get a nice little run on Friday, you could be right there, you know, ready to go with everything going on. So you got to be on your best coming in there Friday. Speaking of which, I will be at. Um, Region one this weekend. I'm going to try to go somewhere else Friday. We'll see. Um, not to get too much into it. I had a death uh, in the family um, this past weekend. Um, so there might be, I might not be able to cover something Friday. I'm going to try depending on how um, the services go and, and such. Uh, but I will definitely be out covering on Saturday. Um, we will be at region one at knock on wood from what I understand. Region one uh, covering the finals of region one up there. Uh, it's going to be myself and Brad Solstice um, covering that. We might also have some other links. We'll just, we'll put that out on Twitter. Um, maybe be a one-stop shop for re your region coverage. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's been a great week and, but it's just kicking up. And like I said, you know, you get through this district and now all of a sudden it's regions. And then before you know it, we're down in Atlantic city and they're blowing the whistle for the first day of States down there on, on Thursday. Um, but we're ready to roll. We're ready to go. And like I said, if you love what we do as far as with the podcast, the podcasting, check us out every week. We're going to, like I said, we're going to have another one coming up here before Regions. Have another one next weekend. Um, if you enjoy our coverage on video, let us know. Admin at GardenStateHSWrestling.com. We're going to be live streaming next year even more. We'd love to cover your, your matches. Give us a, give us a shout. If you feel like donating, same thing, admin at GardenStateHSWrestling.com. You know, we are the official LLC now with Garden State HS Wrestling LLC. Um, and we really want to thank you guys for supporting us in, in wrestling and covering wrestling. And, you know, once we, once we get through the season, I know there's been a lot of people asking me to give the full story on what happened uh, with certain counties. I'll do that after the season. I'm not going to try to distract from anybody, but – like I said, we're in, we're in the heart of the season. If you're a wrestling fan, you should be loving these next few weeks. So for Jared, the podcasting legend, I'm Donald J. Brower. We'll see you next time.